municipality, and that would be Norm Goldie. Norm passed away last last week. Uh, his memorial service uh, is tomorrow at 11 a.m. and it'll be streamed uh, through Haskett's on Facebook. And um, I know that we all knew Norm in our own way. And, and um, you know, I, I will speak personally um, for a moment. I um, worked quite closely with him in my years of involvement uh, with Luke Minor Hockey. And um, I can't say enough nice things about him. He was one of the kindest men, man I, I ever knew. He always had a gruff exterior and sometimes, you know, you'd think I've got to ask him for something and you didn't know how it was going to be taken. But in the years that I worked with him, he was so generous towards me and uh, the things that I was doing with Luca Minor Hockey that, um, you know, it was just a joy to work with him. Um, I've gotten to know his grandsons over the years and uh, his wife, Bonnie, of course, she always helped out at the uh, um, craft shows. Uh, so we certainly send along our uh, condolences and our thoughts to the Goldie family. I uh, was talking to Ken Needham last week and I said, you know, Lucan certainly got a little sadder last week over the passing of Norm. Um, I know that Paul Smith is on as an attendee. Um, I believe he can speak. I didn't know, Paul, if there was anything that you wanted to say on behalf of the arena. Can you can you hear me, Kathy? Yep, I can. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I just I, I wanted to just take a time to reflect on what the, what you said. He's such a kind soul, and as his last name spoke, Goldie, he has a golden heart. That that man is a man of conviction, and he will certainly be missed. I know it was a shock to all of us here, and uh, I, my heart goes out to his family and even all the people in the community. He he was really proud of the fact that so many of the kids he watched grow up. You know, he got to see them coaching their kids on the ice. So it was, it'll be def definitely missing our community. It was a uh, sad news to hear. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, I know Ron, uh, you know, he worked, he, he worked as an employee for the arena for 29 years. We had the honor of recognizing him for his, uh, you know, as a long service employee a few years ago. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add after working with him? Thank you, Madam Mayor. No, the uh, I think you said it best. He he was a gentleman, first and foremost, and uh, you know he he just recently retired five years ago. It's a very sad, very sad day to see this, and um, he will be missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. Said uh, the arena and the Junior C games just won't be the same without him. So certainly, um, from all of us at the municipality, we do send our best to Bonnie and the family. All right, so moving on, uh, is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Okay, seeing none. Um, we have one delegation and he's here for the whole meeting and that's Mike DeVos from Spree. Um, before we get going, I know that we've got a couple of attendees on that have interest in, the, um, in some of the reports that will be presented. And this is a different format. Uh, it's the same format actually that we used for our last meeting, the webinar format. Um, but Ron, did you want to speak to how an attendee can let us know if they've got a question and what function to be using? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. So if everybody on the, on the uh, uh, call, I guess you could say, notices at the bottom, there's, there's a thing called participants and you can see there's 11 participants as, as uh, uh, in, in on this meeting. And beside that is, is a thing called Q&A. So that's question and answers. If you click on that, you can actually type out a question, okay, that then I will take and bring to Mr. DeVos as the engineer for an answer or to Jeff Little, the public works manager for an answer or to council for an answer. So if anybody uh, listening, I know Mike, you're, you're in on the call, Mike Fletcher. Uh, if you do have a question, Mike, that... Uh, that comes up during the discussion, whether it's during Mike's presentation or during Jeff's presentation or, or any, anything, uh, please feel free to type it in the Q&A section and we can, uh, we can get, that, uh, get that answered for you. Okay, so thank you, Madam Mayor. Now there is also a chat function. It's kind of the same type of, of thing. So it, it's, uh, it's an either or type of thing. Lisa DeBoer and I will try and monitor those as they, as they come up. 
and uh, when they do come up, I will uh, I will put my hand up and and uh, get your attention, Madam Mayor, for for an answer. Great. But I think we'd all agree it would be it would be better if we could use the Q and A function. Yes, please. Perfect. Okay, so with that in mind, um, I will uh, welcome Mike to our meeting tonight and turn it over to him. And the first uh, notice of consideration is with regards to the Hodgins drain. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna share the screen here so you can see the drawing. Uh, let me know that you can see it okay. Um, Oh, you disabled screen sharing. No problem. Okay. I'll just talk. Look, you guys all have I, the stuff sent anyway, so I, I can change it real quick, Mike. It should yeah. be uh, it should be okay now. So if you try, okay, if you try it now. It should work. Okay. No, oh, perfect. There you go. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So this report is prepared into sections in accordance with Section seventy eight of the Drainage Act uh, for repair and improvement to the existing. Hodgins drain. It is an open channel, open ditch drain uh, that starts at Stonehouse Line in uh, lot 23 and heads downstream, uh, I'll call it northerly, uh, heads across Breen Drive and back across Stonehouse and can, continues towards Whalen Line. Um, it is currently covered by two different bylaws. What, the upper part is uh, circa 1976 and the lower part was 1945. So uh, there was some requests for maintenance on the drain and as well some improvement. The upper area at the very top end of the drain is uh, being asked to be improved for uh, other improvements to the Riddle McCarthy drain, which is the uh, drain emptying into the very upper end of, of this drain, as well as uh, repair and improvement downstream uh, where there's some issues both with uh, sedimentation and erosion. So we looked into what those requests were. We, we had some meetings to review uh, possible alternatives or options. Um, and it was felt to uh, keep any sort of major improvement to just the very upper end and try to keep the, the remaining part of the project as maintenance. Um, we are looking at replacing uh, two different culverts on the drain. One of the culverts is at the very bottom end and one is about two thirds of the way up on, on the cook farm. So uh, there will be some replacements. The, the road culvert on Breen is not being replaced. Um, and the actual, uh, the one on Stonehouse at the upper end is gonna be part of the Riddle McCarthy drain. It is being replaced, but not as part of this report. Um, there's a few areas where there's uh, some significant erosion from the water uh, dropping from field level down into the ditch that will be repaired as, as part of this project too. Um, so at this point, I would stop and open up to questions. Okay, are there any questions from council for Mike on this particular report? I just Okay, don't see any. And is there any questions from any of the attendees? Which I don't see, yeah. I, I don't see any. Okay, um, what, so what's next then, Mike, on that? Um, the, uh, the council can, can close the consideration and mm -hmm. adopt the bylaw either now or at a later time. Okay. It's a, it would become first and second reading as a provisional bylaw at this point. Okay. Um, so we'll close the consideration for the Hodgins drain. And then we're going to entertain the bylaw though, I think at our next meeting, or is it included? It's later in the meeting tonight, unless there's an issue with it. Yeah, that's oh, okay. the plan, correct, Tina? I'm looking for a nod of the head from Tina. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yes. The okay. bylaws. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I see. Yep. Sorry. I was a little confused there. Okay. okay. All right. So that's it with the Hodgins drain. And we'll move on to then the Casey McCarthy drain. Okay. I'm just going to get my drawing up. 
Okay, um, the Casey McCarthy drain is again under section 78 of the drainage act for repair and improvement to the existing Casey McCarthy drain. Um, it is mostly a tile drain with a small amount of open channel at the bottom end. Um, its outlet is the Elgin field drain at the line at the back uh, back line of two farms, the ones in lot in concessions nine and 10 in lot 24. Um, the tiles that are there now are of varying ages. Um, some of the newer ones were 1976 and some of the older ones were 67 and 1960. So uh, it currently at the bottom end exists as three separate pipes side by side. And due to the age and capacity of the system and the depth of the current system, it was asked to replace it in its entirety uh, as far as getting rid of the old the three old drains and putting one new drain in. Um, we aren't gonna be doing the entire drain. We'll just be going up to Stonehouse line and crossing the road and connecting the pipes that are there. Um, there is still some of the 1976 drain that heads upstream from that, but there's been no request to make any improvements to it. So we'll be working from Stonehouse down. Um, the road department also requested that we replace the surface culvert under Stonehouse, it is uh, fairly narrow and, and not very new. And while we're in there putting a, a, a new pipe to replace uh, the ones that are under the road, it, it was asked for us to replace this one as well. So there's the, the lower pipes, which are our buried tiles. And this is a surface culvert for larger rain events that the tile system can't handle. So it's being replaced as well. Um, the tile itself it has a, a fairly long length of 30 inch diameter pipe switching to 24 and 18 as we get up to Stonehouse line. We will be putting in catch basins at the road and uh, also making some improvements to the, uh, the catching the surface water as the water uh, comes to the back line at the line between the two concessions. Currently, the water is, is actually going over the fence and in through the farm on the west side uh, of the fence line. So we're trying to make improvements there to try and help get the water down into the ditch rather than continuing across country. So again, um, it, the open ditch in this case will have to be deepened and reconstructed to accommodate the, the diameter of pipe that we're looking at. We don't have to do anything to the, the Elgin field drain. We can start at the Elgin field and go upstream. So there is a, a ditch reconstruction component that's about 200 meters long included as well. And I'd stop and open up to questions. Okay, any questions from council on this one? Councillor Regan. Mm -hmm. Hi, sorry, it's just, it's just you have to forgive me because I, I, I saw, I was reading through these and I saw the, the numbers, but I kept coming across some of the, uh, the sections on grants so again, it may be, a, you know, a simple question, uh, but with, with the cost of these things, and it says that the uh, grants uh, can be available for these things, or is that something that we apply for? And I'm not sure if the question's for Mike or for Ron, is that something we apply for automatically for, for paying for these things? Or is that just an odd question? I'm not sure. <laughs> you want me to answer that? I would, love, sure. I would love I would love to the answer. Okay. Thanks. Yes, it, it is um, something so that the municipality not question. The municipality uh, they take care of the process of, of accumulating the costs uh, of issuing any sort of allowances or compensation that's required as well as applying for grants. So um, the whole the whole project as a whole will be applied in one grant form to Omafra. And then OMAFRA will take the, the actual costs that were spent and calculate and verify that the properties are eligible and then send the grant back to the municipality. And then the municipality sends out the net costs. So you prorate the final costs of, of the work uh, against the, the, the estimated costs and then subtract any allowances and any grants that are available. And that net cost gets mailed out to the owners as the bill. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, that's it. Any other questions from council on this one? Um, Mike, just on the special assessment for the township. So that obviously would have to do with the ditch work and the culvert work that. Yeah, there's, there's two components to the, to that. There's, um, 
there's a the in it, the way the act reads it's the increased cost above and beyond a farm tile mm -hmm. so and that happens for any sort of road or a railway or any utility that may be there whether it's a fiber optic cable a water main or a gas main so we have to calculate what we would have built in the field and then calculate how much we have to spend now and for the road that means we have to use sewer pipe and then gravel to compact it so that it can support traffic. Mm -hmm. So it's the cost difference between what we would have done and what we are doing. That's for the lower pipe. That is a, an 18 inch diameter plastic sewer pipe that's going underneath the road. And then there's also the surface culvert that's up higher. And we will be replacing that uh, with a three foot diameter steel culvert pipe that will go from road ditch to road ditch that will take the larger rain events. So that's all of the cost there because the, the, you wouldn't need a surface culvert if the road didn't exist. So, right, right, okay. And then the, you add in some of the engineering costs as well as interest in HST, um, some of the administration costs that's built into the project as well. Okay, great, thank you. Um, all right, one last call from council for questions. And then any questions from any of the attendees? I don't believe this is what the one that he's interested in. Okay, so with that, the notice of consideration for the Casey McCarthy dream is now closed. And then we will move on to the Riddle McCarthy dream. And this is the first notice of consideration. Okay, um, this drain, um, it, we are working under two different sections of the act. We're working under section 78 uh, for repair and improvement to the existing Little McCarthy drain, as well as section four for the extension of the drain upstream. Um, there is an, a, a tile there, but the tile that's there currently is private. It's not part of a municipal drain. So to, in order for that to be extended, we have to have a petition and, and use section four. So that uh, this drain is going to start um, at its current outlet location, which is at Stonehouse Line. Um, and uh, we, the tributary area is in both concessions 11 and 12, and it actually takes some of the houses that are uh, in Granton on the very west limit of, the, of Granton, some of the, the buildings in the rear yards will slope west out into the field or into uh, the adjacent property, the Fletcher property before getting into this drain. So there's a few, uh, a few properties that, that uh, have water that comes this way. They're not physically involved with the project, but, but some of their water will come this way. Um, we are going to be uh, using the existing drain. We're not going to be destroying it. Uh, that drain is circa 19, in the 1980s. Um, so we are going to be twinning it with a second pipe. Um, so in the lower end, we'll be uh, basically giving it more capacity. The request was for some additional depth and capacity. Um, the, the Riddle McCarthy drain does, and a Hodgins drain does exist as a, uh, an open ditch along the east side of Stonehouse line right now, um, heading from the road crossing south to the, the line between lots 23 and 24. Uh, so that was requested to be enclosed and uh, have a new tile put beside the ditch so that the ditch could be backfilled and graded as, a, as an overflow waterway and not have a, a ditch there anymore. So that is included as part of this, this report as well. Um, the, uh, the pipe sizes, um, they range from 27 inch down to uh, a 12 inch pipe at the top end. Um, as the watershed continually gets smaller as we go up, uh, the pipe sizes will decrease. Um, and at Stonehouse Line, you can see a detail up here. It was requested that the two new tiles, there's a 27 inch on the north side, a 27 inch on the west side, that they be taken to the downstream side of the road to outlet so that they didn't have to 
be forced through a single pipe. Um, the pipe that's there is, um, is too high. It doesn't have enough depth for any of the improvements that are being requested. So we, the choice was either to replace the culvert completely or extend the closed drain to the downstream side. And, and after discussions with both the road and the landowners, it was asked to extend the pipe across the, the two tiles across the road and leave the culvert there for, for another day. The culvert, uh, we are going to be extending it a little bit on the west side for safety reasons as requested by the road department. Um, it is the, out, the, the end of the pipe is fairly close to the road there. So they asked us to, to extend it a little bit there as well. And I'll stop and open up to questions. Okay, thanks Mike. And any questions from council on this one? Okay, again, then just so I know the special assessment is just for the, on the township is for the work that you just um, said that the, that the uh, township requested or that the works department requested? There's, there's two, there's okay. the extension to the surface culvert. So the yeah. existing, it, it's a, I think it's about a six foot diameter pipe that's there. Um, it is going to be extended, which is part of that cost. The other cost is for uh, the increased cost be, from a tile to sewer pipe for the two pipes that actually cross the road. Okay. So they are uh, they were using 30 inch diameter plastic sewer pipe with gravel. Um, and the, it's the cost difference okay. between that and the 27 inch tile that, that the road is obligated to pick up the difference. Okay, great, thanks. All right, uh, if there's no questions from council. Do we have, Ron, is that with regards to your question from Mike? Correct, correct. There is one question from Mike. He wrote, uh, just wondering if the project goes ahead, when it would start and finish. So I think probably that's a Mike DeVos question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the process normally is to put out tenders um, after the bylaw is passed. That, that passing of the bylaw uh, might be another month and a half, depending upon how the timing of the meetings go. There is a mandatory uh, time frame for notice to the quarter revision and then you can't pass the bylaw until after the quarter revision any sort of appeal period elapses after that so the best case scenario would be to get a bylaw in about a month and a half it could be longer than that um, if there's any appeals um, and then then we tender the project out and um, we don't typically force the contractors to certain timing in, in the contract, we let them fill it out. There is a fairly limited number of contractors that have the type of equipment that's available to use this and uh, to, to do this type of work. So we traditionally haven't been, haven't been stipulating that. Um, and currently, um, it, you know, the hope was to try and get this built this year at some point uh, going into, the, it'll probably at the earliest be the, late in the year um, but I know there's a few contractors out there that are, are filling up just around now, starting to get to the end saying it might be next year. So it'll depend on, on which contractors end up tendering and being a successful contractor. Um, I know some of the other landowners have been forewarning some of the contractors of these jobs. They're fairly large as far as, as costs go, and, and they're, they're nice jobs for the contractors to have and know about. But I haven't personally talked to any of the contractors to know, you know, would they be willing to guarantee that it's going to get done this particular calendar year. Okay, thank you for that. Hopefully that answers Mr. Fletcher's question. Um, I don't believe there's any other questions at this stage. So with that, then I will say that the notice of consideration for the Riddle McCarthy Dream uh, 2020 uh, is now closed. So just to confirm uh, what the next steps are, we'll have the first and second reading tonight and then the notices will go out and then there's opportunity for court of revision and then it's the third reading. Is that how that goes? Okay. All right. 
Any final questions on the reports as delivered, or not the reports, but anything on the process? Okay, so with that, we'll move on. Uh, we don't have any communications. So we have one motion in front of us, uh, resolved that if no one cares to speak to these bylaws on their first, second and third, or first and second reading, excuse me, that they be considered to have been read a first time and passed, read a second time and passed, and that they be numbered 23-2020, the Hodgins Drain Bylaw, 24-2020, the Casey McCarthy Drain Bylaw, and 25-2020, the Riddle McCarthy drain bylaw. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Councillor Westman and Councillor Reagan, all opposed? And that's carried. Thank you very much. And with Kathy, that, yes. I, got a, I would like to ask one question if I could. If sure, yep. End. Yep. Just, just on communication from the public um, in future meetings, and is it always going to be question and answer and typed in, or will it be verbal also available? It, it can be verbal. So if, if uh, for example, if Mike said, I would like to ask a question, he would type that in, and then I have the option as the host, or Lisa has the host, I am oh. the co-host. We can let them, allow them to uh, to talk as well. So there's that option. Okay, gotcha. I was just curious. But, no, thank you. But for the minutes... Will the minutes reflect that Mike Fletcher asked a question? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. And I just, think the recording, it's gonna be interesting because this is really the first time we've had this, is how, how the recording works because does the recording also record the typing of, of Mike's question? That, that to me, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. So we're gonna mm -hmm. find out shortly. Yeah. All right, okay. Um, anything else before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Should be the confirming bylaw, Madam Mayor. I did, Sorry. I did that. Yeah, oh, I did that. Okay. Um, so a motion to adjourn at 6.30 p.m. Councillor Masterakis and Deputy Mayor Manders, all opposed? And that's carried. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. And thanks for delivering those reports. And we'll see you next week. Okay.